Hey guys, and welcome to a new Blender tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you how to make armor for your Minecraft characters. We we'll make something like this today. It's a diamond helmet. I have different perspectives of it. This scene here. And this is what you'll be getting as, in, as a final product. This is the image I used to make sure that all my proportions were set up correctly and that my images could be textured to fit the right object. This process is a bit difficult, but I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to learn how to do it. The good thing about this thing I'm teaching you is that you don't have to model a different thing for each different helmet, because you can use the same model of the helmet, you can just change the image that's based off of. So as you see here, I have a gold helmet, an iron helmet, and a leather helmet. Now we'll open up Blender. Alright, so I opened up Blender. This is what your start file will look like. I'll provide this in a link via a link in the description. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling the helmet for this character. There are a few things that you need to locate in order to do that. The first things you'll want are the PNG images of the armor and um, the second piece of armor. I named that incorrectly, so don't make your judgments based on that. But you'll use this armor, like textures, and since all of these are similar, they're just different colors, you can apply them to the armor that you'll be making in the different ways. Today I'll just be showing you the helmet. We'll probably make the armor at a later time. Once you've located those files, come back to Blender. Now, we're going to be doing most of the work in this episode on layer 2, and so in order to do that, you go to this button right here and click this. and. That's just left over from my tests. So layer two will be probably be empty. So what we want to do is hit Shift A, add a cube. From here, we're going to add a material and the texture. The material really isn't that important, but for now we'll call it diamond helmet. Now, from the materials tab, click the textures tab and hit new. Go to type and select image or movie. And as you can probably guess here, we're going to be opening that image file that we had before. So I will navigate to that. And mine's, I've used this before, so it's in my default folder. And by the way, my name is not Kevin. We'll go to diamond and hit diamond armor and open image. Now, as you can see, this image is very blurry, and that's not the quality we want. We want to go to image, hit pre multiply image sampling, uncheck interpolation, change filter to area. What this will do is it will make this image much sharper as you can already tell. So now if we render this image, and by the way it will use the camera in layer 1 but it will render both layers. Well actually let's not render that because his body would be in the way so let's just stick with this. Now this next process is a bit um, tasking, or not really tasking, but complicated, so I'll guide you through maybe the first step of it, and then I'll do some of it, and I'll skip through the rest. So first off, just full screen this, we're going to hit, go into edit mode by tab, and subdivide using the W, sub subdivide, set number of cuts to 7, which will make an 8x8 eight eight plane, as you can see here. And each of these faces represents one Minecraft pixel. So this block is really going to be our helmet. Now we're going to do something called UV mapping or UV texturing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to here, click this, select UV editing. Now here you can see we have this, the view of the cube, and we can see it. And we also have this, which is the UV image editor. And this is what we'll be using to texture our image. So first off, to see what, be able to see what we're doing, I'm going to switch to textured mode and press N to, not N, press, oh, N's already open. Press N to access this menu and go to display and change this to GLSL. Now, in order to see what we're working with, we need, actually we don't need lights because since there's no lights in the scene, then it'll automatically illuminate everything but it will not do that in the render. 
So when we do this, we want to use hit B, select all of these faces, make sure that you're you've pressed one on your number pad to be in the front view, hit U to unwrap. And as you can see, it now shows up on this side of the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down so each block, as you can see here, or face, is one pixel. And if you count, you have one, two, three, four. So this square is four times as big as one pixel. So we'll hit S to scale and type in 0.25, which is one fourth. And we can move this using G, and we'll drag it over these faces right here about. Now, the problem, the one small problem with UV editing is that it's really hard to get exact pixels, because it's not really meant to do this, but it can work well. The front is always the hardest to position, which is why I'm doing it first. So it just requires a little bit of hard work, or just time. And make it a little bit bigger. The goal is you don't want, like, see this black stuff. This black is called alpha, and we don't want any of it to be showing when we render. So we can do stuff like this. And grab it and move it so the black alpha is not showing. Move these ones down. Right, there we go. In case you're wondering how I'm doing this, I'm using the G key and then aligning it with the X axis, which is this way, or the Y axis, which is this way. Alright, that looks pretty good. So now let's go into this and hit texture, and it is, isn't showing. Um, I'll be right back. Alright, found the problem. We're going to go to Shift A and add Hemi. A Hemi is a type of light that allows you to see most everything that you're doing with your creations, or in textured mode. Now, you may be wondering, well, this isn't what I want it to show. That's because we didn't change something in the properties menu. So if we go back here to default, and we'll be, I didn't click that, you know, here, under mapping, Instead of coordinates generated, we'll be using coordinates UV. This effectively, oh, while I'm switching back, it takes the coordinates you selected in here and displays it on the image in here. And as you can see, the front of the helmet has been done. So I'll go, I'll do the backside next. So control one for back view and do the same thing. Hit select all of that. Oh, and sometimes it selects this, and in order to deselect things, you could manually click, right-click every vertice, but it doesn't work that well. So what I like to do is I use C for the brush tool and hold down the middle mouse button, like this, and it erases all of this. So only these back faces are selected. Now I'll hit, excuse me, U to unwrap, and as you can see, it's still four times as big. A S.25 and this section back here is the one we want to get them on. So we'll grab them like this and position it like so. It's very di a bit difficult to do. Well, what did I do? Um, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, back. I'll take this, move it back here. On top of this, scale it down just a little bit. Scaling down the UVs is not, isn't as bad as it might seem, because even though your UVs might not be very accurate, it still doesn't have any of the alpha showing. And mine still does just a little bit. If I have a scratchy throat, pardon me, because I might be a little bit sick. But these videos are pretty fun to make, and so I can need to make them. Now, as we can see, this is messed up. Okay, so. This is the front. This is the back. It's turned over 180 degrees. So what we'll do is we'll hit R180. Sorry about that. My blender just crashed. I have no idea why. And so we're back to here and I'll do this again. Control 1 for back view. Just like this. Hit U to unwrap. Scale it down four times. Grab it over here. Decision it. I'm zooming in by scrolling my mouse wheel, and I have a USB mouse on a laptop, so don't judge me. 
All right, now we'll rotate this 180 degrees. Oh, wait, no, not that. Um. Oh. Why is my computer being so screwy today? All right, that looks pretty good. And as I was saying before, if you have a problem with rotation, where well, sometimes there's a problem where if this is set to two D cursor and your cursor is right there, you rotate and it's gone. That's because it's rotated along this pivot point, so it's going in a full circle like that. So you just want to make sure that it's on bending box center or median point. But I use bending box center. Um, I think I'll do the rest of these off camera, so you guys can see how this will work. I'll be right back. Alright, so I finished texturing this thing. As you can see, it's got the helmet, and it looks pretty nice. Oh, there's a little error on top. I'll fix that by grabbing just a little bit. See how this positions. As you can see, when I move the left side, or in the UVN image editor, you can see the top of this helmet moving in correspondence with my movements in the UV editor. Alright, I think that's pretty good. Now, let's, um, I'm going to take this. Well, actually, we still have more things to do. So, let's click this and go back to default. Now, back to texture view. You'll see it, this isn't what it will look like in the render. It looks pretty blurry in the viewport window, but that's not what it will in the render. And there's, um, another thing that we have to do. Well, actually, first, let's move this to layer one by hitting M and then selecting this for layer one. And it's located in layer one right now. Turn back to solid shading. And we will move this up using GZ. Actually, Z, using Z to turn the wire, wireframe mode. GZ to go up. Place it about the center of the head. And scale this down so it's just a little bit bigger than the head. Now, if we render this right now, by putting 0 on the number pad to go to your camera view and hitting F12 you'll see that we can't see through it at all and that's a bit of a problem so what we can do to fix that is right click this um, go into texture panel under influence check alpha and alpha is transparency so if we click show alpha here all the spots that have these checkered lines are have no color and therefore are transparent and so if you think that fixed it then you're probably wrong because you still get this effect that no one wants because we haven't enabled this material to take the alpha from the texture and make it transparent what you have to do is go to hit transparency check ray trace I'm not sure if Z transparency or ray trace makes a difference but down here hit face textures and face textures alpha and if we render this image we should be able to see through the head it's rendering pretty slowly so probably speed up this footage right here okay yeah as you can see here from this little viewport image we have here you can see the helmet now our next problem is that there's this thing at the bottom that we don't want there and despite the transparency of these things there's still a cube face there and so if we were to make shadows using it the shadows wouldn't take the helmet like if you're wearing a helmet it, the sun casts shadows on your face but since this is actually a cube there won't be any shadows on your face so what we have to do is I'm gonna turn off some rendering things here because it's taking a long time We'll go to back into edit mode, hit texture, and what we're going to do is we're going to delete all the faces that aren't explicitly textured. So select all of these ones with C for the brush tool, which is one of my favorite tools. Okay. Um, three for the side view. Select these. Control one for back. These ones down here. Deselect all of this. And finally, the ones in the bottom. We're going to Z for wireframe mode so we can select through 
hit B, select all of these, and delete faces. Now, we just have the helmet. As you can see, this is probably familiar to a lot of you from Captain Sparkles' Revenge. It looks fairly similar to that, except it's not as thick as his helmet was, but we'll deal with that. Now, we can render. And despite those little lines at the edges, which are pretty hard to get rid of unless you're really accurate with your UV texturing, you have the helmet that you want. And now, if you go, and now if we go back to that rendered image, why is it not working? Oh, well, we'll see. Render, render view. If you look at this image, you see that there's this shininess here, which you may or may not want. If you do, then you don't have to change anything else, but. That's because of a setting that's called specularity. And specularity is like a reflection that is that turns white when it's exposed to light. And so you see how when this value is set at 1, there's a big white dot set to 0, and it's not there. I prefer to keep it at 0.5 and maybe increase the hardness to about 100. And as the more you increase it, the less specular it is. And if you want to add another effect that might t r increase your render time a little bit, select mirror, reflectivity, about at 0.1. This will create a little mirror effect to simulate diamonds. But if you're not using diamonds, like gold, well, gold or gold and iron probably reflect. But if you're using leather armor, then you might not want that. So you just uncheck this. And now, this is the part where I teach you how to change which texture you're using. So, if we select the texture panel again, make sure that this is selected. I'll actually, we'll name this diamond helmet. Actually, it's not just diamond helmet. It's reference image. Close enough. We'll hit this to open image, and we can choose any of these. So I've put them in separate folders. I have gold, hit gold armor, and if you render this, it's now a gold helmet. If we select this, hit iron, iron armor. It's an iron helmet. I didn't do that. Go to here, leather. And finally, as you probably guessed, it is in fact a leather helmet. And the leather helmet is probably the one that's the hardest to texture. Because you can see these little dots right here, or pixels. They're the um, they're from inaccuracies in modeling, or not modeling, UV texturing, which is pretty hard to get rid of, but I'm not going to spend that much time on it. And I think that's all. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, pardon me if my voice is sick and scratchy, because I've been a bit sick lately, but these videos are pretty fun to make. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe if you want to. And I think I'll see you next video. Oh, and one thing I forgot to add, if you want to make it so that when you animate this character, the helmet follows them, you'll have to select this helmet, select this bone, hit Control-P for parent, and parent to bone. If you've seen a Fluescraft tutorial on making weapons that follow hands, you'll know that this is how it's used. And I think that if we go back to object mode, this works just as well.